If you were watching MTV in the late 80s, you probably saw John Kilzer rocking out with his top 10 hit, Red Blue Jeans. Nearly 30 years later, John is still singing, but at a slightly different venue. It's a Friday night in the sanctuary of St. John's United Methodist Church. Reverend John Kilzer is using music to reach a congregation filled with recovering alcoholics and drug addicts, the homeless and the curious. This service is called The Way, and it is the creation of a man who's played many roles in his life. I must say you've lived four or five lives, haven't you? I have, I, I, I have indeed, and um, oh, three of them I remember. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's funny how, how it's old, there's a Portuguese proverb that says, God writes straight with crooked lines, and uh, that, that holds true, I think, with my life. Was there a point where you thought, okay, I'm going to be an athlete, that's going to be my career, or I'm going to be a distinguished English professor, that's going to be my career, or I'm going to be a rock star, that's my, did you, did you think that at different points? The first one, the athlete, I, I knew that the only way I was going to be able with my sort of, I knew the only way I was going to be able to go and get a college education was if I got a scholarship. So when I was 14, I made a real, I, it still amazes me that I did this. I, I, you know, I played all sports and I was pretty good at all of them. And I, and I, I remember sitting down going now, if I'm going to really be good at this, I'm going to have to do one of them. And, I, and it was basketball, and, and I, I was uh, um, um, dedicated to the point to where, strangely enough, when I signed and came to Memphis, I was burnt out. But that was one that I said, this is what I'm going to do. The, the, uh, the, the, the teaching English was just because I loved that stuff. That was not planned at all. Music was the least planned of it. Really? You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, I didn't start playing music till after I was in Memphis. It's such a part of your life, though. Oh, it's, it's, I, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised. It, I never sang in the shower growing up or, in, or anything, <laughs> you know. And so it's my sanctuary now. I mean, if I didn't have music, I could not do this other stuff that I'm doing. Now, you had a, you had a big hit. Red Blue Jeans was, it was top ten hit, wasn't it? It was. And, and uh, how many times did I see the video on MTV? My goodness, oh, it was a regular rotation. Why did can't you, they take that thing off YouTube? Did, do you think that... I'm going to be a rock star. That's what I'm going to be. No, that, that was, you know, honestly, that was that was really bizarre because I was just really kind of playing gigs in town and doing doing paying, you know, the, the paying the dues sort of thing. And then I had a bidding. The next thing I know, there's a bidding war with Warner Brothers and A&M and Gaffin and all these. Just it went like that. And having to get attorneys, and 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 all of a sudden having my own tour bus and MTV videos, and going and all touring with Moody Blues, Little Feet. You know, I could I could easily sit here and say that that's why I escalated into my addiction, but that would be not taking ownership. Well, you were already. I was already there. Yeah, I was I was wired for it. Yeah. I was wired for but it. it. But it I, let me tell you, I had made it worse well, though. I it? It, I had fun. fun. <laughs> I had fun for a while, and then, uh, you know, I, it just caught up with me. And didn't it really uh, ruin your career? Yeah, as, yeah. Uh, with, with Geffen, right? Yeah, they finally, you know, they ended up kind of realizing that uh, this guy's just, uh, you know, he's helpless, you know, yeah. he's helpless, and they sent me to Europe. And so you come back and decide to go to Divinity School. Well, the reason I went to, to uh, Memphis Theological Seminary is because when I was in jail the last that time that I had a conversion experience, there was a beautiful African American brother there that started speaking prophetically to me, saying, "You're going to go in the ministry," and I'm like going, "If you know, I, if I wasn't in jail, I'd cut your tires for saying that." You know? But he spe was speaking prophetically to me, and we started having these Bible studies, and so. I called my wife and I, she, you know, it's one of those, you might know you have a drinking problem if you have a certain place that your wife picked you up from jail, which was the Kentucky Fried Chicken for me on Poplar. So, and there was the typical routine of where we'd have to go find my car and find my keys. It was always an ugly thing coming out. And so she picked me up at the Kentucky Fried Chicken and, and uh, I said, Stacy, you're not going to believe what happened. I, I found Christ. And she goes, you can't find your keys, you can't find your car, and you found Christ, you know. And so what I literally did is I went home, 
And, and the gentleman that said I was going to the ministry, they, everyone used code names because I was in pod five. And his sub code name was seven. And, he's, and, and so I went home and I said, well, seven says I'm going to go in the ministry. So what does that mean? So I said, I guess I got to go to seminary school. So I looked in the phone book and the, the closest one was Memphis right. Theological Seminary. And I remember going there to see Dr. Barry Anderson. And he's saying, well, will you, you know, what, what denomination? I said, well, I, I grew up in the Methodist church. I guess Methodist. And then I remember asking him, I distinctly remember asking him, as, as we're here where I was sitting in the church, I remember going, I said, now I'm going to the ministry. Says, does, does that mean I'm going to have to go to church on Sundays? <laughs> you know, I'm like going, is there any kind of, is there, you know, any sort of clause, anything? It's, but it was, it's, you know, as, as I think back on it, it's a little bit, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit, um, um, atypical, you know, but here I am. Let's talk a little bit about the addiction because when you look at the different lives that you've had, the subplot throughout most of it has been your addiction, correct? Um, you have, I've learned a little bit about and work and talking and in, 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 in dealing and working and in, in rolling my sleeves up with folks in addictions that, that everybody has a little bit of something that they're in recovery from. And um, mine was just, you know, uh, like a fire hose, though. And, and so the thing that happens when, you, when, when by the grace of God, I, I should, everything I say, I should prelude it with that. But the thing that happens is that you realize when you kind of are able to, to, to quit the drinking or the drugging or whatever it is, you, don't, you realize that it's not necessarily that you have a drinking or a drugging problem, but what you have is a living problem. At what point did you realize this problem is so serious, I've got to address it? What was your, I've always heard that every person with an addiction has a low point. They hit the bottom. A bottom. What was yours? Well, I hit the bottom and slid sideways for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but mine was when I, uh, um, um, I was in jail nine times, uh, you know, alcohol related then. By the grace of God, I didn't kill anybody. You know, it was veh vehicular stuff. Um, but there, towards the end, I had three consecutive times to where I ended up in uh, 201 Poplar. Uh, the last time, I was in 201 for about four days during the time which uh, uh, um, I had a conversion experience there in the jail. Um, and and it, was, um, it was as real and as mysterious as the ones that you hear about. But that was that was you know the thing about bottoms. There also the, what you when you when you hit these things that are called a bottom is just when you're 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 what what occurs is you do that first step in AA is you admit you're powerless and that your life has become unmanageable. Um, some of us need a little bit you know I'm just the knucklehead. I needed to kind of just get more bumps in my head. I guess you know. Let's talk about the way because that's the service that you hold. Tell me about it. Uh, what we do is, is um, on Friday nights at 6 o'clock, which is the most difficult time you would think to have a service, but it's also the time that people that are dealing with addictions and alcoholism, or that's like what they say, the eagle flies on Friday, you know? And then I can remember thinking that's the time when I was trying to get my blend right, you know? So we want to have a sanctuary, a place where people can come Everyone, people in addiction, people that are, that, that are wherever you are, and that's again where I use the language, we've all got a God-sized hole in our heart. I knew that if the, the, the vision that if, if it was going to work from when I started out, that it was going to be music-driven. And here in Memphis, we're the best musicians in the world. I suspected that if the musicians got their hands on the rope, that it had a good chance. If that didn't work, it was not going to work. And, and the musicians that have come in and have embraced the ministry, I, in a large way, I, 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 I think that's why it's really working. Do you feel like you're making a difference? I'm the one that's being changed by it. You know? I really? mean, it's, it's like, um, you know, there's an extraordinary thing that happens when you just kind of say yes to God and, and um, that, that allows you a freedom that, you, that, that I never experienced. I mean, I mean, I've taken, you know, I've taken so much LSD, I thought I'm the freest man in the world, you know? I was like, look, those are, 
I can see the moons of Pluto. And the guy goes, no, that's moths around the street light, dude. So, I mean, I thought I was free on all this other stuff, but the real, the real freedom that I've experienced is the freedom that comes through the, you know, as it says in Galatians, for freedom Christ has set you free. It's a different kind of freedom. It's a freedom with the responsibility, you know? It's a, it's, it, it's a freedom with both hands, you know? What does your future look like? You've gone through all of these roles. Um, are there other roles out there for you? You know, I don't think so. I, I, I think that um, um, the music component is, 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 is what kind of drives me. Uh, if I didn't have the sanctuary of the music, I'd crumble in two days. But if I, didn't, if I just had the music like I've had before and didn't have this anchor of faith, then, then I would, you know, you know, I'd be like a kite with no tail. So you gotta have tail on your kite, you know? This show, of course, is all about uh, the aging process. I'm interested to know what words of wisdom you have from your life and at your age. Um, do not go gently in that good night. <laughs> You know, uh, um, spoken like an English. Well, major. you know, and or through the green fuse drives the flower. I, it's it's a uh, it's you know the older I get, the more I'm just really mystified by by life's intricacies and delicacies. It's a natural process. Um, um, you know, it's 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 full of cliches, but the uh, uh, this you kind of move from from uh, the love of wisdom to the wisdom of love i think and you 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 kind of take you're taking that really even though it's just from here to here this is a very very long journey from your head to your heart and uh, you experience a sort of cardianosis i think the older that you get and you're not thinking so much and you're actually you're 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 thinking with your heart does that make sense yeah it does Thanks, John. Thank you. Enjoyed it. My pleasure. I don't think because I want to. I just drink for the pain. And it keeps me warm at night while I'm sleeping in.